Welcome to this episode of the Harpreet Singh Show. In today's segment, we are going to learn something about Buddhism because every religion teaches us some different practices and by practicing those, the basic idea is to become better human beings. What is Buddhism all about? And especially, there are various forms of Buddhism and one is called Nichiren Buddhism. What it is, we learn from Pooja Ruprel and Arpana Das Aroda. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So, Pooja, if you could uh, let us know uh, a brief history about Buddhism as such and also the practice uh, what you do in uh, Nichiren Buddhism. So, Buddhism originated from Shakyamuni Buddha, mm -hmm. as he's also called Siddhartha or Gautama Buddha. This was 2000 years back in the Indian subcontinent. Right. And he set out from his uh, royal palace seeking an answer to the four sufferings of life, as he called them, which was birth, aging, sickness, and death. Mm -hmm. He traveled quite a lot and finally um, understood the true nature of his life right. and started, uh, he was called then um, the Buddha mm -hmm. or the awakened one. Right. And after his passing away, it spread quite a lot, but uh, many different schools of Buddhism sprung up. Okay. And all his teachings were compiled as sutras or texts. Right. And um, somewhere in between it got lost. Mm -hmm until the 13th century in Japan, there was a priest by the name of Nichiren Daishonin, okay. um, who researched all of those Buddhist te mm -hmm. texts and came to the conclusion that the Lotus Sutra mm -hmm. is the ultimate teaching of the Buddha. Okay. It uh, reflects his heart mm -hmm. exactly as um, he would have wanted it to. And the Lotus Sutra was the teaching that he taught in the last eight years of his life. Okay. And at that point, he had told his followers that disregard everything else that I have spoken about prior to this, mm -hmm. this is my ultimate teaching. Right. So, um, and Nichiren Daishanin then uh, grasped the title of the Lotus Sutra, which is Myoho Renge Kyo, mm -hmm. and started to chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Mm -hmm. In 1930, um, in Japan again, there was a gentleman by the name of Sune Saburu Makiguchi, okay. a teacher, mm -hmm. who formed an organization called Soka Gakkai, which means uh, value creation. Okay. And he started to propagate this Buddhism, the right. Nichiren Buddhism. Mm -hmm. in, 19, in the 1970s, the Soka Gakkai International mm -hmm. was formed and Buddhism was taken to many different countries. And today we have over 12 million practitioners mm -hmm. in close to 200 countries chanting the Myoringi Kyo and practicing Nichiren Buddhism. Right, so this is one sect of Buddhism, if I may say that uh, are the, is the philosophy a bit different, like you said about the sutras and the Lotus Sutra was the major one which uh, uh, the founder of this particular uh, form of Buddhism started uh, chanting. So is there any major difference between the different sects or it's just like one of the sutras has been picked in and that's been further uh, propagated? Um, there is differences. Some sects talk about um, you can be happy after you die. Okay. Some, uh, some of them talk about priests and the empowering the priest right. and um, talk about worshipping God. Mm -hmm. Um, Buddha is a god, right. but Nichiren Buddhism is, we don't do any idol worship okay. and believes in the empowerment of the single, of each single human being. So okay. the Lotus Sutra, the reason Nichiren Daishonin um, propagated the Lotus Sutra was because it believes in the inherent okay. potential of every single human being. Okay, wonderful. We'll discuss in details mm -hmm. about this. So Parnaji, if you could tell us a little bit, uh, how did you get attracted towards uh, this form of Buddhism? Um, so when I got introduced, which wasn't too far um, off, it was just five years back, when I got introduced, I was mm -hmm. fascinated with the kind of people I encountered in this Buddhism. Okay. They were all so happy, you know, mm -hmm. so jovial, and uh, not that they were not going through any kind of struggle. Mm -hmm. They all had some kind of an obstacle in suffering. And, and we all do, as human beings, we all have mm -hmm. these kind of sufferings. We cannot escape that, but they were so happy. So that was right. one thing that was really fascinating for me. And then. Another thing that I saw that all practitioners did was they were 
praying and chanting for each other. Okay. According to me, since I was brought up just thinking, my notion was that we all just pray for each other, our, our parents, maybe our family and friends right. and people whom we know. Mm -hmm. But here, even strangers were coming into my house and they were just chanting and praying for my happiness. So. Mm -hmm. I, and they were in, in themselves creating value in their own lives and they oh, were right. being so jovial and happy because of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was completely fascinated. Plus I was seeing a lot of young people being attracted to this practice. Okay. It was pure logic when I studied more and more of this. What I saw was there was a lot of cause and effect talk that they were talking of and pure logic and science being spoken of. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people were also into this. And I had to, I had to practice. I had to right. try this as to see, just just to see how what transformation it can bring into my life. Right. So of course you were attracted by this fascination yeah. that yeah. people, other people are praying for each other, and everyone is happy. But uh, since the past five days, as you said, you have been practicing this. Mm -hmm. What impact has it had on your life? Oh, tremendous. I can't even begin to tell you. It was as if before my life, before I was not chanting, it was as if my life was black and white. Okay. And now it's got color. So right. It's more like a color TV right now. It's mm -hmm. got real quality of life right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll give my own personal experiences. Um, not very detailed, but just to begin with, before before I started practicing, I used to travel for a job, which mm -hmm. I had in downtown, and I had to go for an hour and a half. I had mm -hmm. to travel and take sky trains and buses and I was getting more and more comfortable with that and because of that I was not learning to drive I was overworked underpaid but I was thinking that's life mm -hmm. but as soon as I started chanting it was as if my life was going through all green signals and <laughs> immediately I landed up with a job which is now just three minutes away from home okay. and because I was so close to home I had to visit different sites in this job um, and I had to learn to drive. I just could not go from, you know, busing. Mm -hmm. um, I had given up driving personally because of an accident that had happened and mm -hmm. because of that my confidence had been shaken up. Right. But as soon as I started chanting, I could see that courage from within me came up and I, I, I became fearless and I was able to drive. Okay. The job was value creating that I received. It was, of course, more pay and closer to home with mm -hmm. learning to drive. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these were some, some of the amazing benefits I right. saw. And then just being an immigrant into the country, I was also so lonely chanting mm -hmm. for, for more company, more people. I did not ever in my wildest dream expect my family to come here because they were all very well settled there, my parents and my cousins and brother right. and everyone. But today, in five years, they're all here. Okay. And I don't know how that happened. <laughs> they were completely very well settled, but now they're all here right. surrounding me. So you believe me. it's because of uh, that chanting I you're totally believe, about. and they are chanting too now. Okay. Now that they've come. So something kind of brought them here, some, right. some mystic thing brought them here. They're all practicing now. I have a good quality of life, surrounded with genuine good people, well-wishers, having a good job. And I'm not saying that I don't have obstacles. I still do come across obstacles and suffering. That's mm -hmm. a part of life. It's just right. how we look at life now. It's so, so that different. has changed. That perspective has changed. Yes, completely. We'll talk about this also. So yeah. Pujali, tell us how uh, personally, like uh, Parnaji has told us, how, is, how did you get attracted and also uh, how has it impacted you now? I think like most people, we seek, I sought spirituality because I was going through a tough phase in my life. Mm -hmm. I had been through a severe accident, I was on bed, um, simultaneously postnatal depression. So it was really the worst time been in my life right. and somebody took me for a Buddhist meeting. Mm -hmm. And just hearing them chant together, I had no idea what it was, never mm -hmm. heard about it. Right. But just hearing them chant those words as a right. group, something shifted within me. Okay. And I came home and I really had this desire to chant and right. I started to chant. So, so from the chanting you got attracted and how it brought change in your life. We'll talk of this uh, after this short break. car accident vich lagiyan satan ta zindagi tabah kar sakdiyan phir vi pata nahi kyun tusi samjhde ha ke bagair kisi vakeel to ghar de kharche vi sambhal loge satan da ilaj vi kara loge te icbc to apne hak de paise vi le loge meri gal suno car accident to baad kee sawal uthde ha unna sawalan da jawab kaun doga tammi narang and company nu ajj hi phone karo 604-864-6131 Once again, welcome back to the program. In today's segment, we are talking about uh, what is Buddhism, the different forms of Buddhism, and especially we are focusing on Nichiren Buddhism. Before the break, Pooja Ruprel and Aparna Das Aroda talked to us about 
why they got attracted and what fascinated them and why they are practicing this. Let's continue with the discussion. So before the break, Rupert, you were telling me that you got attracted because you were in a trauma and uh, you, you, after chanting, things started changing. Mm -hmm. But what is this chant? Uh, you have used this chant a few times during this talk. So tell us a little bit about what is this ch chant and just by chanting, uh, do things change? So the chant is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Mm -hmm. It means, um, simply means, I dedicate myself to the law of cause and effect. Okay. Um, and just, I won't say that simply by chanting things change. It depends on how we chant. Right. So somebody could be chanting for 20 years and nothing changes in their life. So a lot has to do with the person who is chanting. Right. We lend power to it through our own attitude. Okay. And there are many, many aspects to what we do. We chant, of course, we chant collectively, we mm -hmm. pray in the morning, we pray in the evening, we get together in groups and we study more. Mm -hmm. We try to contribute, as Aparna already mentioned, we pray for one another, we also try to contribute to the society in whatever little way we can. Right. I think the crux of it is that we want a happy world, mm -hmm. we want a peaceful world, and peace begins with me, happiness begins with me. Right. So what is it that I can do to make, to find that happiness and mm -hmm. only when I have found it can I now start reaching out to somebody else right. and helping them be happy and the chain goes. Uh, right, so Pooja, just tell us that, uh, like for example, if anyone who is not a Buddhist, he or she wants to chant this uh, hymn, what you are saying, so can they just chant or they'll have to convert to Buddhism for that? I'm a Hindu by birth mm -hmm. and I'm still a Hindu. Right. Nothing can change that. Mm -hmm. I have never been asked to change it. Right. So I follow Buddhism more as a way of life. Mm -hmm. And from when I was young, I loved going to the temple. I loved going to church. I went to the Gurdwara. Right. And I found peace in Buddhism. Right. So there is no, no mandatory, no conversion, none of that. Right. So it's your own personal belief, what you want to do. But along with that, you can just add on to this. And this gives you peace. I go to every Sunday to my children. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you, you tell us that uh, how, long, how long do you chant basically and uh, again this chanting, is it at a specified time uh, or any time you can just uh, keep on chanting it? Um, any time is good. I don't think um, the question about kitni dev chant karna chahiye, that's not the point. The point is that we should be consistent. Right. Subha and Sham, morning and evening is a good idea, good practice mm -hmm. to chant and have some quality time, oku, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Jitna dil kare, jitna dil se awaz hai, utni chant kare. Right. Sometimes I'm at a stage of my life that there is a challenging situation and my, my life calls for one hour and I do it. Mm -hmm. But it's perfectly okay to do five, ten minutes. The point is to be consistent morning and evening. Parma, you mentioned that uh, youngsters are also getting attracted to this. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit that it like, started in Japan, as you said, but uh, now that it is in Canada, you are practicing it over here. Is it spread quite uh, far now or is it just confined to a few countries? It's um, almost 200 countries. So I started practicing in India 15 okay. years back. That's where I started practicing, and mm -hmm. uh, when we moved to Canada, this was in 2006, the SGI was already existing here. Right. So, Guruji, like you have said, it's, uh, I understand the concept of this slogan, what you have said, but uh, if you have to sum it up, basically, what is it? What are we uh, getting by chanting it, if you could just sum it up? And also, if someone wants more information, where can they get it? By chanting, we are tapping into the infinite potential of mm -hmm. our lives. Okay. So, we are tapping into the wisdom, the vitality, the strength, the courage, the compassion within us mm -hmm. and helping it to manifest in our interactions with people okay. in our lives. And if people want to contact the SGI and if they want to know more, our, um, the SGI Cultural Center is at 8401 Canby. Mm -hmm. We host meetings once a week, every Wednesday. Right. New members are welcome to walk in. Mm -hmm. They can just ask questions, interact with other members, and chant a bit. And it's free of cost. Absolutely yes. free and of cost. And we have websites, sgicanada.org. Wonderful. Thank you very much, and uh, best wishes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, as we were talking about the fact that Buddhism is about the fact that we have a nature and Buddhism एक मंत्रा जो है इसमें चैंट कर देने बार बार उसमें दोहरा देने ते ए नहीं कि किसी एक सीमित समय ते ले जदो मर्जी जदो दिल कर दे ए कीता जा सकता है ते ए दिन आल इन्होंने क्या है कि मनोबल जो है वो बेहतर होना है ते तुष्य अपनी जड़ियाँ एनर्जीज ने जड़ियाँ छुपियाँ हुई हैं एनर्जीज ने उन्हो इन्होंने कहा कि ये प्रेरित इस करके हुए क्योंकि इस देवेच कोई रोक टोक नहीं है का कि ए करना है कि ओ करना है इस देवेच हर एक कोई एक दूसरे वास्ते भी प्रार्थना करता है क्या खुशी नाल एक दूसरे नो मिलता है ते एक बड़ा जोबियल ते वधिया एटमॉस्फेयर होता है एनवायरनमेंट बहुत वधिया होता है 
ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਆਕਰਸ਼ਿਤ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਹੁਣ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੇ 200 ਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਨੇਚਰ ਇਨ ਬੁੱਧਿਜ਼ਮ ਜੋ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਫੋਲੋ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਫਾਈਨਲੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਹਰ ਹਫਤੇ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਮੀਟਿੰਗ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਵਿਅਕਤੀ ਜੇਕਰ ਹੋਰ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਲੈਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਕੇਮਬੀ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਜੋ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਵੈਬਸਾਈਟ ਜੋ ਸਕਰੀਨ ਤੇ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਉੱਥੇ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਆਪ ਵੇਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਬੇਸਿਕ ਐ